Good morning, everyone. This is Star Obsessed Scott for What's Happening in Birmingham. Today, I have the honor and pleasure of being with Mr. Philando Parker, who is Mr. President and CEO of I Hang TVs. Mr. Parker, good morning. How you doing? Good morning. Good, good. Thank you for taking time out your day to, you know, we just want to talk with Mr. Parker and just learn more about his business and learn about his new business venture that he's about to launch or been doing. Um, so, first off, um, how did you start I Hang TVs? Well, I was working at Direct TV and uh, saw a need that there was people switching from fat back TVs doing HD and saw a need and just got involved and filled it. Okay, okay. And I guess during that time, TVs, you know, back in those days was big box. Now we flat screen, yeah. so it made it much easier for to hang on the walls. Absolutely, yeah. Very easier than to hang on the wall than the fat back TVs. Okay, okay, okay. So when you first came up with this idea, what, you know, walk us through the steps. Oh. Well, when I first came up with the idea, I was a single dad at the time. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I actually bought my own flat screen TV and tried to figure out how to put it on the wall. And me and my daughters in installed it on the wall, figured out how to get the wires inside the wall. And my baby girl said, Dad, this can be a another business because I had to close down a business to get custody of my children and be more focused on my children. And uh, but she's she knew I wanted to get back into business, and she made that statement, and that's what fueled the thought and, and put me in, on track to try and figure out how to get this go going. Okay, okay. Um, so what distinguishes IHANG TV from similar services? Well, we hide the wiring. We offer more affordable pricing and getting it done. Our basic installation is ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents. Uh, well, we would basically install the TV on the wall and hide the wires from standard wall install. Okay, okay. Um, so, I guess the next question I was asked you is, you know, normally time, walk through the process, you know, someone give you a call, then you come out and do an estimate. Do sometimes things vary, to, you know, how houses are built? Yes, the number one question that we ask when people call us is whether the TV is going over a fireplace or on a stand-up wall. If they answer fireplace, then we schedule an estimate uh, to come out and take a look at the installation and see what we got to do to get it done, analyze it, go by a price chart and create uh, the actual work order, or the invoice, I'm sorry, the estimate, and they want to move forward, then we schedule it with the office. If it's a standard wall install, we can quote those mostly over the phone. People call us for that or they can go on our website and key in certain information that we need to know and basically we'll give them a uh, call back. Okay, okay. So, you know, in this area of do it yourself, Mm -hmm. um, what pitfalls will you tell someone and be like, well, I can hire somebody to do it, but I can do it myself? What potential? The number one thing, especially in apartments, that we've been noticing that people attempting to do it themselves, they're running into uh, water pipes mm -hmm. in the wall that are coming from the upstairs apartment. Mm -hmm. And if they drill in that wall, a lot of times they can bust that pipe. Oh, okay. uh, so a lot of the pitfalls also come up with homeowners where there, a lot of times there are fire blocks that will go sideways in the wall and you can't run the wiring down when you end up with the wall damaged. So there are certain things that we know about a home that helps us know whether a TV can be installed on a particular wall. Okay, so usually on a typical day, all right, how long does it usually last, you know, once you got that installed and things like that? It depends on the installation because we install TVs on standard walls. We also install TVs on brick walls, patios, um, so it's just a matter of where they would like to have a TV installed, also how they would like it wired. There are some homes that we do what we put on the patio, we wire that TV to the bedroom TV. So when they're not in bed, they're on the patio watching that same cable box. Okay, okay, okay. So how has the industry changed over the years, you feel? The industry, well, the TVs have gotten way lighter. We used mm -hmm. to have to employ two people to be in the trucks to go out and do the installation. Now we only have one gentleman in the truck or female in the truck to actually go out and perform the task. So it's a lot easier for us in that area. Also, TVs have become more easier to obtain by the, with the pricing has, has come down a, a good bit. Okay, okay. So when you first started this business, and I don't know if you, a lot of you people know him, but he has a big group on Facebook called Entrepreneur Talk. Uh, but I've known him for years, we've known each other for years. One thing I've always liked about Fernando is he always had out-of-the-box marketing techniques. Yes. So when Keith tells us, like, when you first started I Hang TVs, what was some of your out-of-the-box? The marketing technique, the number one marketing technique that I uh, practice is the three-foot rule. People within three feet of us need to know what we do for a living. <clears throat> so when we do our uniform shirts, we put the logo on the back, front, and on our trucks, we do the same thing. Uh, marketing techniques that we use with text message marketing, 
We also use some email marketing, TV, radio. Uh, we do hand fans in the summertime when it's extremely hot. We pass out hand fans with our information on it. Those are just some of the small things that we do to kind of keep the be relevant and, and brand ourselves. Now, one of the things I always love in our early conversations, we first started talking to each other was how you came up, you know, of course, for the name, mm -hmm. but you also got the website, I Hang TV. Yes. And I think sometimes with business owners, they need to see, like, you need to make it simple for people think, especially yes. in this era of Google, yes. that you even bought, we hang TVs. Yes. With the domain name that we picked for our website, we picked the domain name of IHangTVs.com after wanting the name WeHangTVs.com. The name WeHangTVs.com was uh, over in Waco, Texas, of a gentleman who was attempting to do what I was doing, mm. and later found out that he dropped it, and we ended up picking up that name, and we own both domain names. It's very important to have a, a short, straight-to-the-point domain name because it helped people remember how to get to it or what have you. When you have a long web domain name that it's hard to remember sometimes, remember, remember how to spell things and how to get people to find you. So we kept it simple. Okay. Now, one idea he didn't mention, but in the moment I remember I was having a conversation, I laughed. He used to put, like, his signs on poles. That's he right. used to put his business cards at gas stations. That's and right. he would drive. You never know. People be at the gas station all the time. They may right. pick it up. That's right. But that was one of the out of the box marketing yeah. things. I was like, man, he, he thinking, you know, other people ain't thinking it's all about eyeballs. How many times do you see? That's right. That's absolutely right. And, the, and everything. Um, I guess next question, you know, among all business on tell me about the toughest time period you had in your business so far. The toughest time period we had is when our second year in business, uh, we wanted to go on television to get more people to know who we are, to brand ourselves, and we didn't know how to target with our money, so we just advertised, paid money out, and it just didn't work. And we get, I got upset because we lost a lot of money in advertising. Um, it kind of set us back a bit, so we went back to what we know in advertising, some of the small things. Um, <clears throat> we got through the, the tough times by understanding our target customer. Who wants to have TVs installed? What we learned after studying and taking a poll from the customers is that the customers that benefit from our services most have disposable income, they live in new subdivisions, and they make a certain amount of income, which allowed us to, to, to be more selective in how we did our uh, upper web uh, in, uh, advertising. Okay, okay. Now, I'm glad you bring up price because some of the biggest things about small business owners is how we decide what to charge for our service. And also on top of that, it's almost like sometimes you can go low and have a bigger headache or you can charge high and have less headache mm -hmm. and, and everything. Right. Um, <clears throat> I guess the question <coughs> next I would like to ask you is that, you know, first you know, you first started off, it was one man show. Mm -hmm. How did you transition to from that to managing multiple employees and able to trust your employees to go while you can be, you know, more of the CEO? Um we I developed what's called a 30-40 rule. 30-40-30 mm -hmm. rule. Mm -hmm. And the 30 40 30 is uh, thirty percent of of a hundred dollars I keep in my pocket, forty percent goes to uh, the overhead to, uh, to run the business, such as the trucks, the, the, the building, what have you. The other 30% paid the employees. We let that money build up of the 30% for the employees to be able to pay people. We've always been in a position to make sure that we pay people, to make sure they have their money. Um, to, to, to get everything to stabilize and to be able to trust, uh, basically I had to know everything there was about the business. I had to dissect the duties that I needed done. Uh, and once I dissected everything down and gave people those uh, the power to do those particular jobs, the pieces of a puzzle start to come together. Anytime that we start having challenges or problems within our organization, I start realizing who weren't doing their job easier versus having one person that do everything. Okay, okay. So football season's coming. Oh yeah. Um, some more you know. Um, and this is this usually like your busiest. Yes, Season. our busiest time starts November the 1st. Okay. November the 1st, people are getting ready for Thanksgiving, family coming home and gatherings in their home, as well as the Iron Bowl parties. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times in November, our, our business picks up tremendously. Um, and right after Black Friday, I'm sorry, thanks, uh, Iron Bowl and Thanksgiving, there's Black Friday. Black Friday is when the most TVs in America is sold. 
So we capitalize off of that by advertising uh, real heavier on TV or what have you to get more people to know that we exist and install on television. And we do more business in November and December. And then if we basically kind of simmer up a little bit in, in January, picks right on back up in February for the Super Bowl time and things like that, then we have tax season that lasts all the way over to May. After May, we focus on patio TV installations all throughout the summer, all the way over to the next November. Okay. So in addition to tough sales season, what other goals do you have for your business to kind of round up the rest of the year? Um, <clears throat> what like to accomplish? What I like to accomplish most in our business is, um, is, is quality um, installations with help and management and growing our management team to, to, to franchise out our business and to expand more into other areas uh, of the South. Okay, okay. Um, the next business venture I want to really talk about, um, it's called Birmingham Grub, for right. some of you started. So tell us how you kind of start. Birmingham Grub is a business that we started, it's BirminghamGrub.com. Mm -hmm. And we started that business because we do digital menu boards in restaurants. And what I noticed in doing digital menu boards is that people were coming in and asking the restaurant that they have a takeout menu that they could take with them or how could they see their menu online. There was a lot of small, smaller uh, restaurants that don't have the ability to have their food displayed online or didn't have the ability to, for a person to come in and see a, a digital menu uh, of their food. So the idea of coming up with Birmingham Grub came with a way to display the, the restaurant's food on a person's cell phone, on a desktop, um, and, and make it easier for them to have a directory of menus where they can actually see the food, do a call in, call waiter, I do a, um, um, a order online. Okay, okay. Yeah, as you see, this is the website in the background. Yeah. Uh, how many restaurants have you so far signed up? Right now we got, I think it's 12 restaurants. We're okay. still signing on other restaurants. We're getting the word out. Uh, we got to do some marketing uh, in that area. And we are getting gearing up now to do some serious marketing against restaurants. Okay, okay. So with this business, where I hang TVs, how have you took the lessons from my name TVs and able to apply it and start this? Well, the number one lesson I knew we needed a website. Um, the mm -hmm. marketing techniques I'm understanding that I'm studying now the target customers that we need to have for Birmingham Grub, uh, most of the restaurants. Um, I've learned uh, to to be more careful on how we approach the actual targets of our customer, I mean, uh, of our business, and those customers that we're going to target are going to have a clearer understanding of what we're doing versus when we start first on our hang TVs. When we started our hang TVs, it was very hard to explain to customers how we would hang their TV, put it on the wall, and run the wiring through the wall and put the cable box in the closet. Nobody had understood how the cable box was going to work. So it took a lot, a lot of picture taking. It took a lot of commercial creating. and thing, It took a lot of creativity to get known for what we actually do. And we needed a website to help illustrate that. And mm -hmm. so that's what we're trying to be careful with with Birmingham Grove. Okay, okay. I want to go back a little bit, back to the man himself. Um, you know, like early you said, single father, but you have a very inspiring story yeah. that a lot of people don't know about. Yeah, that's true. Um, you tell them just a little tidbit of it. Um, okay. I was a single father. Um, I became a single father back in um, early 2000s when I noticed that my daughter was had, had had a baby or what have you and I couldn't take it and I basically took the mom to court, won the case, ended up with my kids, my three my three daughters and two grandbabies with me. Um had to close my business, my last business, and I went broke, ended up on food stamps, section eight, things that whatever it took, just make sure that I can get my kids raised the way I felt that they needed to be raised, put them through school get them graduated, and then focus on what I needed to focus on. Ended up getting married, um, starting IHangTVs.com in the later parts of 2000, 2008, um, and got, got IHangTVs off the ground. Now my kids are grown. I have eight grandkids now. Woo. And uh, <laughs> Got a little grown in the face. Probably don't see it with the camera. but Yeah, so right now it's just that uh, the story that I've been through is deeper than that. It's more than that. Um, it'll take a while for me to explain it all, but it, it's definitely a, 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 a 
true testimony to my life uh, on how to, to just persevere and stay on the path and, 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 and come out at the end of the tunnel. There was always light at the end of the tunnel. So I've learned a lot along the way. And I come from a rough background. And uh, my, 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 my days today are way much brighter than in the past. Okay, like even with that adversity, mm -hmm. that's nothing compared to when you face some business when you had personal adversity yeah. and able to plow through it. Yeah, the, the personal adversity that I faced as a young man, and it, it made it easier for me. It's, it's a lot easier for me to, to withstand any blow in business. And because when you've been to the bottom and you've been there so long, Blows in business don't hurt as much as when you've been as down as low as that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so kind of drift back. If, if they want to get in contact with you, yes. how many ways can they reach you? You can contact us by online at ihangtvs.com or either wehangtvs.com. Um, also, birminghamgrub.com. Our phone number is 205-326-6884 in Central Alabama, um, Atlanta. You can call us from any, any one of them. You can notice them online. Our email address is going to be office at ihangtvs.com or bookkeeping at ihangtvs.com. Okay. And I got to ask this last question um, before I said for more contact. What inspiring words would you give to business owners if they're watching this? Wow. Um, inspiring words for business owners. I, the, the most thing that I can tell, tell a person in business is to hire a CPA, have an attorney in business, and always pay your taxes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> pay your taxes. Pay your taxes. <laughs> so you can live comfortable. Yes. yes. So on that note, thank you, Mr. Parker, for your time. Also, check out BirminghamGrub.com. Mm -hmm. And for more information, please check out what's happening at Birmingham.com. Thank you all again. Have a great day. Bye-bye.